Jeff with the uh, Gamer Faction. I'm here at the 2017 Calgary Expo. I'm here with Amy Chu. Um, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you wrote a Poison Ivy series, uh, Cycle of Life, which is right actually here. that yeah, fellow yeah, right yeah, there. Okay. Uh, what drew you to Poison? What drew you to Ivy? What drew me to Ivy? Um, well, you know, the real question is why did they offer it to me? Because that was I was really surprised that I even got it because um, you have to picture these things. And um, what uh, it was important to me for Poison Ivy is that she's a scientist, and I feel like not a lot of people are covering that aspect of her. Um, so I pitched. I pitched smart and um, uh, you know this is the whole the other the other aspect I think that also drew me to she's she's frequently portrayed as an eco-terrorist and I don't think that's quite right you know I think she has her own morality and I felt that was really important to explore uh, not so much that it was about terrorism is that um, she has her own agenda in a lot of different ways and we don't necessarily understand that so it's a lot of gray area like she's not essentially like yeah. on the good or evil side it's cycle of life and death is really about her just want to be left alone to pursue her science but of course she gets pulled into a murder mystery because people think that she killed the person you know um and uh yeah so it's, i mean i i i love writing her because she's a complicated character um on the project you repaired with Clay Man, mm -hmm. uh, was he someone that you like requested, or how was he attached oh, to the well, project? Oh, Clay and I, are, uh, we knew each other, we we're friends, and uh, we we're having dinner, and um, you know, this is the thing, we, we're, it's a small community here, and I love working with everybody, and uh, I did not realize that uh, Poison Ivy is one of his favorite characters, so he was kind of like, yeah. You jackpot. Know. Jackpot, I'm not even jackpot, I'm like, yeah, I, it's not that I have complete control, but I'm like, oh, if you want to draw her, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to the editors and you know so before I even I'm talking to the editors I'm like oh by the way and I'm about to mention they're like oh so what do you think about Clay Man? I'm like okay we're good it all worked out Done. yeah um, is there like a or do you often get a choice of like the artists that you work for or it depends that, on the that editor that it depends on the, on the property um, you know sometimes the decision is made ahead of time like Red Sonia they had our, hired Carlos first and then they hired me um, if it is a short story typically they'll ask who I want to work with um, but again it's, it's it, it depends and also depends on who's available is there a, like a character that you've yet to kind of like uh, write that you're still kind of like it's like a bucket list type of oh absolutely character? I mean I'm new in this business there's a whole list of characters I would love to write I've been telling DC I would love to do Killer Croc you know maybe Killer Croc and Poison Ivy I don't care I'll do either or both you know they kind of work because I mean like you you kind of stay within the Batman canon there's always a reason for those guys to work together but yeah yeah and, and again I think Killer Croc is again one of those um, characters that hasn't been fully explored and I think there's a lot of layers to Killer Croc that I would love to, you know, work on. Is there uh, a comic you took to writing that turned out far different than your initial concept? Oh, all of these. Yeah, pretty much everything? <laughs> yeah, pretty much everything, because, you know, that's the nature of comics, right? I mean, it's, uh, once it goes to the artist and it comes back, this is really the fun part, you know? If, if you want it to come out exactly how you imagine it to be, then you need to be the artist, too. So, that's my view on it. I, I, um, I'm always, you know, I, I take it back, there's only of the X-Files deviations that came back exactly how I imagined and that almost never happens. So. Um, I read that you never really like read comics growing up, but your grandfather was a huge fan of comics. Yes, that's right. Yeah, somebody could have told me that, you know, it would have been helpful. It's so like, like your, your grandma, like, oh, I think. My grandmother, you exactly. It? Uh, it was Mother's Day, in fact. I was visiting her. I was at uh, the Toronto, I think it was Fan Expo, and uh, you know, I'm like, okay, I need to, uh, I need to see my grandma. But nobody knows, she, nobody's told her, right, that I'm doing comics, and of course, she immediately says, oh, you're, so you're doing comics. Nice. Yeah. Um, now, what can you tell me about uh, Alpha Girl comics? Like, that's okay. your imprint? Yeah, yeah. This is um, this is what um, started me into yeah. comics. Um, I started doing. Um, my, my friend who writes for the Sci-Fi Channel, she, she was like, okay. well, you know, she wanted to do the comics. I, and I'm like, okay, cool. I mean, I'm, it's not like I didn't read comics. Everybody reads comics, but it wasn't a thing for me at that time. I was like, uh, if you write the stories, I'll publish them because I don't think it's rocket science. And what if we try to find some artists? Or, so th that became my whole journey, right? It's like all of a sudden I'm like, I got a letter. I got to do all these things. I'm talking to these artists. I'm like, this is, this is a cool world, you know? And, um, 
and then I wrote a short story through Alpha Girl, and people really liked it. And I'm like, oh, okay, um, I guess I'm in comics now. So. Nice. I shouldn't say this. It, that makes it sound super easy, but it was just one of those things where you start down a path, and then it becomes um, Alpha Girl. Kind of became the obsession. Like I'm like I really want to do comics, and we want to do comics that were accessible for everybody, including young women. That was the whole idea behind Alpha Girl. You're a graduate of MIT, uh, so well, Wellesley, uh, what, yeah, Wellesley uh -huh. um, Harvard Business School. Yeah. So I take it all that really helped with starting like your imprint. Uh, yeah, I mean it, it, it helps have an MBA, I guess. No, but you know what? Not really. The, the, doing a startup is uh, it's a lot of real life experience type of stuff. It certainly helps people take you a little more seriously. And sure, I can do the I can do the numbers. I can do the numbers on my Kickstarter easily. <laughs> you know, I can do the um, you know um, you know things like that. It certainly help, but all, all you know, all these degrees. You don't need all these degrees to do comics. You know, certainly to write comics. Um, you know, it's, it's a very expensive way to go about getting into comics. I don't know that it really helps per se. Um, I'm not the only one that's. I mean, like Cliff Chang went to Harvard. I mean, nobody knows that really. You know, it, and it doesn't affect his art. But um, you know, it's more like we're a zoo curiosity sometimes. <laughs> What can people currently see you uh, writing? Um, it's, it's Red Sonia and it's um, Kiss. Those are my two series right now. Um, then I'll be wrapping up Kiss. Uh, I have, I'm, I'm signed up for 10 issues for both. Okay. So I'm, I'm working on that right now. And then um, uh, what do I have coming up? Oh, I have the Lion Forge series coming up. That's coming up end of this year. And and, um, that's a, a female astronaut who goes to space, saves the world, uh, and gets superpowers at the same time, but she doesn't want them. You know, it's very complicated. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.